So how do you initialize the Lloyd's algorithm? Well, uh, well, we know that the algorithm definitely converges no matter how you initialize it. We argued that, right? So our argument was uh, agnostic to the initialization of the algorithm itself. So we could initialize it however you want, but then some initializations might lead you to better clustering. So the question is, can we initialize it in a good way so that, you know, we might hope to end up in good clusters. So what are some possibilities? Well, uh, <clears throat> one thing is we can simply throw data points into boxes uniformly at random. I pick a data point, I have k boxes, I'll put it in a box at random, right? Uh, but that's not a very mindful initialization, so to say, right? So we are just throwing points in boxes. Um, it it will definitely converge, the algorithm will converge, but it, it you're not really giving that initial push uh, to beat these local minimas that the algorithm might get stuck in when, when it converges. So that's, so throwing points at random in boxes without really understanding the structure may not be that good an idea. So what do we really want? We somehow want that at the end, we know that points um, have the property that clusters have the property that each point is closer to its own mean. So one thing that you can do is you can start your initialization in the initial partition by saying that I have thousand points in my data set and I need to put them in five different boxes. I'll pick five points uniformly at random from my data set and imagine these five points as my cluster centers. It means that I am initializing not the Zs, which is the cluster indicators for each data point. Instead, I'm initializing the means, right? So I'm initializing which are going to be the means. And once I fix these means as points that are uniformly picked from the data set, now each point will get attracted to its own closest mean and then will go to that box, right? So one way to do this would be to pick k means uniformly at random from the set of data points from the data set, right? So you have thousand data points, maybe data point number 5, data point number 72, data point number 89, 2522, whatever these numbers are, those are your initial random plot. They correspond to your means. You put them in each of these boxes separately. And then for every other point, you see which of the these five points I'm closer to and then it gets assigned to that box, right? So that generates a, a initialization where at least, you know, the points have the property that, you know, they have, they have been chosen to be closer to a particular mean and then they go into it. Now, that does not mean that the algorithm has converged, right? So because uh, every point is only going to a box based on the mean, which is another data point, a single data point. A lot of data points might come in and then the means will get recomputed and then the algorithm will start from there on and so on, right? So, but then this is a very, you know, it's not such a bad idea to do this. And then in, in practice, people do this a lot of times. Um, and in practice, this is something that is, uh, what is typically done is you do this and then you'll run the Lloyd's algorithm. It will converge to some partition. Now it could so have happened that the initial K means that you picked as points from the data set, uh, you might have gotten unlucky. So what you might want to do is you run this with different means again, right? So you again rerun the algorithm where the initial randomness is again generated. You pick five different means, k different means, and then rerun the algorithm. And then you do this multiple times and you end up with the, pick the clustering, which gives you the best objective value, right? So uh, that is what people typically, a lot of people typically do in practice. So this is one way you could do initialization. Um, another slightly more principled way is what is called as the um, k-means plus plus algorithm, which is just k-means algorithm with uh, a better initialization. Here, the idea is the following, right? So we still want to pick 
k points from the data set which we want to think of as the k means to begin our data algorithm with but if you are picking them uniformly at random uh, you might not you are not you know putting effort into picking these means carefully so what do we want these means to look like at the end right so let's say we run an algorithm algorithm converges if you are happy then it means that these means are as away from each other as possible because the means are some sense representing each cluster we are thinking of the entire data set as being compressed into you know k different representatives which are these means and these means have to be as up, as different as possible right so they have to be as away from each other as possible if they are they are close to each other then it means that well the representatives are similar well then why should i want two different clusters i could have had single cluster right so this idea is formalized uh, while you initialize uh, you initialize carefully such that your means are in some sense as apart from each other as possible um, <clears throat> but but then you do it with a slightly probabilistic twist and that's what uh, will lead to this k means plus plus algorithm which i'll describe now um, the algorithm does the following so it it tries to not choose k means as k different data points from your data set uniformly at random in one shot it does not do that whereas it does this in an iterative fashion what it does is the following right so it first chooses uh, the first mean let's call this mu not 1 uh, where this not just means that you know uh, this is the iteration number this just means it's at initialization um, mu not 1 uniformly at random from your set of data points x1 dot 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 xn you have n points um, pick one point at random and call it your first mean so the first mean is fixed now you need to choose the second mean right so now here this is done in an iterative fashion so for for l equals 2 to k where l l represents the lth mean that you are going to pick um you are picking one at a time so what you do is the following right so you want to pick you want to choose mu not l that is the lth mean at initialization <coughs> now probabilistically uh proportional to score the following score right so you're going to give so basically you have a bunch of remaining data points right so you've already let's say picked five means you we want to choose the sixth mean now you have a lot of data points you had 1000 data points five points have been already assigned as means you are in the sixth round so which means you still have 995 points from which you need to pick one now what we are going to do is we are going to give a score to each of these points and the score is a positive number and then you are going to pick a point with probability proportional to the score higher the score more the probability of picking that how do you do that you kind of can normalize the score over all the remaining points and then that will give you a probability distribution over these remaining 995 points and then you can sample one point according to this probability distribution for example instead of 995 if you just had three points let's say remaining points from which you need to pick one the score of first one is 10 the score of second one is 20 and the score of third one is 30 let's say we'll talk how you get the score in a minute let's say you had these scores 10 20 and 30 um now what does it mean to say i'm probabilistically picking one point according to the scores it means that i'm going to normalize these scores to say instead of 10 20 30 i'm going to think of it as 10 divided by the sum of these scores which is 10 plus 20 plus 30 which is 60 so this will be 10 by 60 20 by 60 30 by 60 which is 1/6 1/3 and half and that would be the probability with which i'll pick each of these data points so now what are these scores um well now what do i want to do i want to be as away from the means that i have been that i have chosen so far right so let's say i have already chosen five means i want to pick the sixth mean so now every point is a candidate for the sixth mean 
Now, how am I going to judge this point as being good or bad with respect to the five means that I've picked already? Well, I will compute the score of each of these points to the each of these means that I've already seen and see what is the smallest of these scores, which means which of these means I'm closest to. The one that I'm closest to, if it is the distance to the closest mean, if it is large, then it means that I'm away from all these means. Right? So if the closest guy is far away, then everybody else is far away. So I'm going to give a score to each of the data points as exactly the minimum distance to the means that I've seen so far. Right. So uh, let me put this formally. So this, this is like saying uh, the score to, for a point X is just the minimum over all me all j from 1 to l minus 1 because i have already have l minus 1 means this is the lth round what is the distance i'm thinking of x minus mu naught j square right so i'm computing the distance squared to each of the data points each of the which i have chosen as mean so far and then i'm seeing which is the smallest distance which is which point am i closest to and that distance is what I'm thinking of a score for a data point. Now, every data point gets a score, right? So for all x, right? So this is for all x in the data set, I can compute the score. Um, and now I will now sample the next mean, next as a data point according to this score. Right. So in a probabilistic fashion, which I explained earlier. So now you're going to normalize these scores over all the data points. And then you're going to probabilistically sample one data point like this. Right. So, um, so if x1, x2, x3 are the remaining data points uh, and x1 score is 10, x2 is 20, x3 is 30, then x1, the probability that x1 gets chosen is 1 by 6, which is 10 by 60 and um, x2 gets chosen is 1 by 3 which is 20 by 60 and x3 gets chosen is 1 by 2 which is 30 by 60 right so i'm going to sample according to this so this is the k means plus plus way of doing initialization um, one might wonder why am i doing this in a probabilistic way why can't i simply do this uh, in a deterministic way i want the means to be as away from uh, things as possible um, why can't I simply pick uh, S of uh, the, the next mean as the one whose minimum distance to the ones that I've chosen so far is maximum. I could have done that, right? So which means in this case, if there are three points, 10, 20 and 30, well, I would pick X3 simply because X3's minimum distance to whatever that has been chosen is much higher than the other two, which means it's much far apart than the means that I've seen so far. Um, well, what we are saying is that x3 still gets the highest probability of being chosen in k means plus plus, but it need not necessarily be chosen. It could be x2 also. Um, and you need this probabilistic way of doing this um, instead of deterministic way because you can show some kind of guarantee for this algorithm, right? So um, we'll we'll I'll briefly touch upon this guarantee. Um, what this guarantee? What can you guarantee for this algorithm is as follows. Um, and this to argue this guarantee, you cannot put down a deterministic algorithm because once you put down a deterministic algorithm, you can come up with an adversarial data set where this guarantee might fail. So you want in some sense an average guarantee. And so you make the algorithm randomized, but then you do the most natural thing where you kind of introduce probability where the deterministic choice will get the highest probability, but then still other people might also get some possible probability so that um, on an average you can make some kind of guarantees so so i'll briefly touch upon the guarantee so the guarantee looks something like this i mean we won't go into the details or we won't argue why this is true in this course but then it's good to know that there is this underlying guarantee available so the expected value of sum of i equals 1 to n um, xi minus mu zi squared which is the you know the this is just the um, objective of the partition that the algorithm results in after I run k-means. I do this initialization, run Lloyd's, and then I end up with a partition and I can compute its objective value. Now that objective value is a random quantity because my initialization was random. Um, the Lloyd's algorithm itself is not random, right? So once you fix an initialization, everything else is deterministic in the Lloyd's algorithm. 
but because the initialization is random uh, the answer final answer is also going to be random so which means i can ask over the randomness of the over randomness uh, of uh, algorithm which is the initialization how does this on an average how how am i doing with respect to the objective function uh, what i really want or care about is the best possible thing right so minimum over z1 to zn um, sum over i equals 1 to n xi minus mu z i squared so this is the best possible that i want i want that partition which gives me the least possible um, objective value i may not be able to get it and that's an np hard problem to get that but what i'm saying is here k means plus plus guarantees is that um, you may not be able to achieve that partition which gets this but then on an average you are not going to be too far away from that partition in some sense you are going to be something like um, some constant times this quantity something like this basically what it is saying is that uh, let's say the best possible objective function gives me some value of 10 um, on an average i'm saying that the partition that k means plus plus will result in is not going to be more than let's say the objective value is not going to be more than let's say 5 times 10 right so it's going to be more than it but then it won't be too far away also on an average that's the kind of guarantee that you can give um the specifics of the guarantee or how this comes about uh, is is beyond the scope of the course we won't prove that um but it's good to know that you know by doing reasonable initialization you might end up in partitions which are not too bad the downside of doing this is though that you need to spend a lot of time doing this initialization right so because if you had a billion points um, and you want to choose 10 different means now every time you need to compute these scores and then you need to you know do a probability convert that to a probability sample and so on um, you can do some tricks to make that faster but then still you need to go through this thing of doing this k different times so computationally this might be uh, less efficient or might take more time than just you know our previous method which is just pick k means uniformly at random and then try it out and try it multiple times and see what works uh, so that's faster uh, the the uniformly at random method is faster but then it's not i would say principled right so it's not pushing your means in certain direction um, but typically uh, in practice especially when you have high dimensional data uh, people also use the uniform one extensively right so now it depends on how much time your algorithm i mean you have to run your algorithm how much resources you have and all that will make you will this i mean you can make a decision based on that um, nevertheless k means plus plus is a solid uh, way to initialize your uh, large algorithm okay so that's uh, that's what i wanted to comment about the uh, initialization part so the final thing that we will talk about is uh, the choice of k which we will see next